One, two, three, four. Okay, so you're probably wondering, where's Mike? What is John doing here in his house, apparently, or somebody's house? I don't know. It's my house. Um, anyway, uh, so this is kind of a, a screwed up week. Uh, for those that don't know, I uh, I tested positive for COVID, so um, heading into the studio wasn't really an option, uh, if, you know, unless I wanted to pass it around to everybody, but didn't see the point in doing that. Um and of course, coming right before the walk to end Alzheimer's, which is tomorrow, uh, Saturday, September 30th in downtown Howell, where I had been set to MC. Uh, not great timing. Um, and so mild symptoms, uh, which I'm happy about and, you know, fully vaccinated and boosted. And so, uh, you know, I'm glad for that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, can't MC the event this year. So Mike uh, has decided to uh, has gladly accepted the role to step in and, and serve as MC of the event. So I hope folks still turn out Saturday uh, in downtown Howell uh, for the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Um, and so I, I put this together as a quick Zoom version, if you will, of uh, our podcast this week. And um, we have a special guest coming up here. Uh, in just a minute, and we're going to talk about an upcoming event also in downtown Howell uh, here in a couple of weeks um, that will be honoring uh, a special individual and supporter of the show. So so that's coming up here in just a second. Before we do, though, I do want to thank uh, our sponsors, of course, that make uh, the podcast possible. Um, and, you know, uh, clearly uh, chief among them uh, is Firehouse Doors. Um, you know, so appreciate the support of Mike and Kim Witt uh, and everything that they have done uh, for the podcast. Um, and of course, Firehouse Doors, uh, more than 25 years of experience uh, providing quality workmanship, materials, and uh, of course, service uh, for Livingston County. And give them a call if you have any questions uh, about your garage doors, Firehouse Doors, uh, really the undisputed leader in Livingston County. Give them a call, 810-599-7480. Um, and of course, uh, they are, um, you know, the sponsors of our trivia on Facebook during the week. And so uh, lots of people enjoy those trivia questions. And so we we thank them uh, for, for their support uh, with that as well. And of course, our uh, other big sponsor, is uh, Murphy's Family Auto. And so we want to make sure that uh, uh, we give uh, those folks a shout out here as well. If I can uh, see, I'm playing around here. Okay, there we go. Uh, of course, uh, the great folks at Murphy's Family Auto, we appreciate their work as well. And, uh, you know, open Saturdays 8 to 1. Don't forget the Mike and John discount, 5%. Just mention Mike and John sent you. Uh, and really your one-stop shop for everything for your automotive needs. Tune-ups, brakes, expert electrical, everything you see here and more. Give them a call, 517-552-3040. So again, thank you to our sponsors and uh, we appreciate everything. And hopefully by next week, uh, we will be able to get back to a, a normal uh, format. But in the meantime, uh, we do have a special guest uh, and we want to share their event coming up with you. All right, we're talking with uh, Nikki Moore, um, who uh, is the uh, widow of uh, Steve Moore, a firefighter from Howell, a lieutenant uh, with the Howell Area Fire Department, uh, who passed away uh, last year after a, a battle with pancreatic cancer. Um, and uh, Nikki, of course, Steve and yourself have been, you know, big supporters of uh, the podcast. And, um, you know, we so appreciated Steve's support uh, and of course, followed his uh, his battle uh, and his journey, which, you know, uh, even though he has, uh, uh, you know, his earthly remains have left us, um, you know, the battle continues. Um, you know, his pancreatic cancer uh, is something that many firefighters uh, are finding themselves having to deal with and and their wives. Yes, yeah. Um, 
cancer is the number one killer of our firefighters. And it's all types, pancreatic, lung, esophageal, um, and more and more are, are finding that it is work-related. You know, and I think that that's a big, uh, I think for many people when they hear that, I know for the first time I heard that, it's surprising. We all know that firefighting is a very dangerous occupation. And so you would automatically think uh, that, you know, uh, injuries, uh, you know, suffered in the line of firefighting itself in terms of actually fighting fires um, would be, you know, that top, uh, you know, cause, uh, but to find out that it's cancer. And I guess, you know, we've really seen in recent years, um, an effort uh, to protect firefighters uh, and an understanding of the carcinogens uh, that are emitted during these fires and, and get on the equipment and, and then, of course, are transferred to the firefighters themselves. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, they're they're working really hard to make sure that every firefighter goes in with a pack and a mask. Um, you know, when Steve started in the fire um, service, they used to call it leather lunging, where they would just go in. They didn't have enough masks and air packs for everyone. And if they needed more guys, they just went in. And so they were breathing all of that in. So that uh, generation of, of firefighters were seeing it more um, as they get older chances are they're going to get some type of cancer from those and also the foam that they use you know sometimes they use the foam instead of the water to put the fires out and that also the chemicals in that foam has been proven to cause cancers as well so um you know people used to think oh, heart attacks because of all the equipment they use or injury but it, it's cancer number one so, you know, in recent years, there's been this event called Walk for the Red, uh, a, a firefighter from uh, Macomb County who, who began this um, and, uh, you know, recently came through Livingston County, uh, does this every year. Um, and I know last year, uh, you know, Steve was able to come and, and uh, you know, take part uh, in that walk. Um, you know, this is shortly before he passed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, you know, this year, again, when the walk came through Livingston County, it was, uh, you know, um, you know, t touching to say the least. And I, and I, and I would say, uh, you know, um, very emotional, the fact that 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 Steve, you know, is his absence was very obvious. Um, and I know yeah. you were able to take part in that walk. Um, I did. And and Steve's daughter as well. Yes, um, both da two daughters. Uh, or both yeah. daughters. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so that had to have some, some, you know, real meaning for you to do that this year. It did. Uh, I was determined, you know, that I was going to be there. It was tough, you know, cause he wasn't there, but, um, the cause means so much to me, obviously. And, uh, Joe has become family. You know, he's the one that does the 140 miles. So they dedicated the Howell stretch as the Steve Moore Memorial leg of the walk. Um, he was a big part in getting Joe recognized in Livingston County um, two years ago, three walks ago now. And uh, he, it was just him, you know, and, and not too many people noticed him walking through Livingston County uh, a few years ago. And, and Steve made sure that, you know, you know, Steve, <laughs> um, when he wanted to be heard, he was heard. <laughs> so uh, he made sure every department knew that he was coming through this county. Um, so every year it's gotten, you know, bigger and bigger. And this year we actually went down Grand River and our fire department had, um, I think there were four departments represented and the, the trucks lined Grand River from Michigan Avenue down to station 20. And there were people lining the streets and it was amazing. And which absolutely. And I know people responded, uh, very well to that. And, and as you were just saying, I mean, each year that this has happened and, and obviously a lot because of Steve's advocacy, you know, more and more people have become aware of this. Um, and it was interesting, I think that during the, the walk this year, um, you know, how many people I saw on social media, uh, because last year, I remember there were many people on social media that are like, what is this? Why is there, why are there fire? And then this year it seemed to be more, people were very much aware of what it was all about. Um, yeah, we really tried to push it out there because last year there were 26 firefighters on the list. This year there were 59. Wow. It more than doubled this year. And so to get the funds we we needed to generate, we were really, really trying to, to get this out and let as many people 
um, know about it. Uh, that's how we came up with these smaller walks now that we're doing the the memorial walks right and so that transitions us to uh the event that's coming up october 15th and this will be the steve moore uh, memorial walk yes yep so um we came up with this idea to do some local walks for some of the firefighters um in their communities and uh so it's a two mile walk um, around the track at Howell High School. They were generous enough to let us use their track. Uh, fire department will be there. There'll be some vendors, there'll be food. Um, and what it will do is the proceeds that we raise, 75% will go to the Walk for the Red 140, which benefits the walk, the people from um, for next year. Uh, and 25% of the proceeds will go to uh, cut, um, kids or young adults or whoever want to go through the fire academy or EMS training. So we'll put a fund together and the fire department will be in charge of distributing those funds to someone who wants to become a firefighter. And this will be ongoing. We plan on having this year for this walk for as many years as we can. Right. And, uh, and as far as people signing up uh, at this point, that's full, but people can just show up that day and take part. Yeah, so we had a registration period and that had to end a, a little early um, because they wanted part of the registration, you got a t-shirt and they needed to order the t-shirts. But um, people can just show up that day. The walk starts at 11, um, registration starts at 10 and you can come and donate and walk. It's family friendly. Uh, we're going to have, like I said, vendors there and some food and uh, fire trucks. Um, so yeah, if anybody's interested in coming and walking, it's only two miles, that's eight laps and, uh, it should be a good time and the money's going for a great cause. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I want to, uh, take this moment here to, to, I guess, talk a little bit about Steve. I mean, I, you know, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, so much of this is around, um, you know, the loss of Steve, mm -hmm. uh, but Boy, those people, and I think you somewhat, you know, alluded to this a little bit. And I think, you know, I know, I know people who knew Steve, um, you know, what a, a tremendous personality he was uh, and a character for sure. Uh, but somebody who very much, um, I think, supported um, uh, the fire service, first responders in general uh, in a big way. You know, and you, you talked about when he started in the fire service and I, I was reading up and reminding myself that he actually started as a junior firefighter, I think when he was still in high school. Yeah, he was 14 years old when he started in Brighton as a part of their um, junior fire um, academy. And he uh, he fell in love with it. Actually, he wanted to be a firefighter before that. You know, um, his best friend from the time that they were seven said that Steve used to ride his bike and make the, you know, siren sounds as he was riding his bike and when he was old enough at 14, he started and he never looked back. He had 45 years in. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, having talked, uh, you know, having known Steve and been his friend for so many years, and I know talking to other firefighters who worked with him, um, I, I guess the one word, I mean, there's many words, but the one word that I think that is, uh, come through that came through was somebody who was, uh, absolutely loyal to a T. I mean, if there was something mm -hmm. about Steve, I think you could never doubt. And that was, that was his loyalty. Yeah. With Steve, you always knew where you stood with him. People either really liked him or really didn't because there was no gray area with him. If he didn't like you, you knew he didn't right. like you. And, <laughs> and if he supported you. He supported you a thousand percent. He was a very big personality with a, a really big mouth. And, um, you know, that was great for some and not so great for others, but yes, very loyal and integrity was right. You know, number one for him. Yeah, I guess actually you're right. Integrity would probably be the word to use that would be better applied, you know, and I, uh, my first dealings with Steve were many, many years ago when he was still at the Brighton, uh, fire department. And at that time there was some internal issues and this is a long time ago. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, he knew that there was things that needed to change. And um, I think he he had the integrity and I think he had the bravery uh, to make sure that the ball got rolling so that they did change. 
uh, which they did for the better, uh, both for yeah. firefighters and for the public. And so in a lot of ways, I think Steve, you know, and he was one who was very much like, no, nah, I don't, no, nah, I don't, don't, I don't need that. You know, don't, don't mention me. I don't need to be, but I just think that he deserves so much credit for somebody who, uh, uh, again, understood, um, you know, had a real sense of right and wrong. I guess mm -hmm. that's, you know, kind of like you said, people either loved him or they hated him. And you're right. I mean, there was that very, you know, definitive line. And I think, but also he, he had a very strong sense of what was right and wrong. Um, and, you know, and when something was wrong, he, he knew that, you know, um, that was something maybe that needed to change. And so, um, I, you know, I, I hope his legacy, I, that's the thing I would really like to see is that that is his legacy that, that remains is the integrity and the knowing right from wrong and the, and the loyalty mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, what a guy, uh, and I don't have to tell you that, uh, <laughs> but, um, but I'm hoping that the event, uh, again, coming up on Sunday, uh, October 15th will be something that, um, again, will help sort of solidify that reputation. I'm going to share this on the screen again so people can see it. Um, and again, it's the Steve Moore Memorial Walk for the Red Sunday, October 15th. Um, you know, sign in around 10 and the walk will get underway uh, at 11. This is at Howell High School and uh, people should just show on up uh, mm -hmm. and, and take part. And this will be the beginning, I think, of many years of this. Uh, and again, raising funds uh, to help other firefighters through this crucial battle which you know obviously is just something that um you know we want to make sure that uh our first responders and our firefighters um you know that they know that they're that we got their back i mean they have our back we want to make sure we have their back yeah absolutely and there's also still opportunities for sponsorships as well there's a link um that can be followed to or you could go right to neighbors united and and if there's a business or someone that wants to sponsor they can do that as well um, or just make a donation. If you can't make the walk and you want to make a, a donation, there's a link. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that this lasts for years to come. And it, like I said, it's for a great cause. These men and women risk, risk their lives for all of us, you know, on a daily basis. And this is the least we can do is try to take care of them and their families, you know, when they um, have to deal with uh, this horrible disease. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, once again, and I, uh, if the, on the screen, I believe there's a, a, a QR code people can, uh, take a look at and, and follow the link yeah. or just go to neighbors United, like you said, on Facebook or wherever, uh, and they'll find the details. But again, the Steve Moore Memorial walk for the red coming up Sunday, October 15th at Howell high school and, uh, Nikki Moore, thank you so much, uh, for, you know, uh, taking some time to talk about this and, 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 you know, uh, sharing Steve with us. Well, we appreciate your support through this whole thing, too. It, it's I know it meant the world to Steve and it means the world to the family. So we appreciate you guys so much. All right. Well, and again, thank you uh, to Nikki Moore. And uh, thank you for everybody for your patience this week. Uh, uh, Mike and myself will be back uh, next Friday. Uh, hopefully Susan will be able to join us. Um, and, and once again, uh, please, if you uh, have uh, the availability to uh, show up Saturday, uh, uh, September 30th, that's tomorrow, um, in downtown Howell for the Walk to End Alzheimer's. And um, if you get an opportunity, stop by uh, the Team Gigo tent and, uh, you know, join Team Gigo and walk with us for a great cause. So until next week, I uh, hope you have a great one. You've been giggling with Mike and John. Tune in next time and giggle on.